the whole episode of Impact from this week, but apparently there is a badass segment on Impact where Sue Young confronts Susie. Ooh. And, oh, I want to see it. And it's like, yeah, way to be creative about having to have to tape your shows. Like, you can do shit like this now, and you can have two people, you know. This is why I'm saying, at Matt, the same time. I hate to say it, but Matt Hardy needs to be, like, the first legitimate person to leave AEW and go back to Impact. I, I agree. I think they're awesome. on top of their cinematic shit right now, and that's the only place it works. Honestly, we've seen it in WWE. We've seen it in AEW. The only place Broken Matt works is at Impact. For real. I agree. I think they just work well together. So I am excited. I would say if anybody has the time, at least go back and check that segment out. I haven't seen it for myself, but from what we know of Impact's history, what I know of Sue Young, and uh, just from what I've heard, it's it's got to be an awesome segment. So I recommend people go back and watch that. I know I'm finna. Have you seen his, uh, Matt, Matt Hardy's new work as the iconic Matt Hardy on AEW lately? That's actually pretty decent. Yeah, I seen him on uh, this last week's episode yeah, of, of AEW talking talking to Top Flight about oh you guys used to watch us when you were growing up, but he's like yep. oh well the Young Bucks used to watch me while I was growing up, and so <laughs> you watching them watching me, I'm uh, the reason for all of this. Matt fact, <laughs> I like it, and if that's like the cocky, if he wants to go back to like a V one style heel character, do right. it, do it because. The broken just It works better than the broken, at least there. Yeah. Yep. We'll paste you more good news. Another furloughed employee, former cruiserweight champion Shane Helms, and former uh uh talking shop of mania guest returned to WWE in his producer role. He was the just hurt. in the Matt Hardy segment of the last AEW pay per view. And <laughs> WWE's like, no, you got to come back. The Hurricane was reportedly backstage at Survivor Series, and he was also a producer on this week's episode of Raw. Yeah, they seen that uh, Talking Shop Mania, i.e., kind of Impact, they're Impact esque, and AEW were all over him. So they, <laughs> they're like the kid that doesn't like a toy and quits playing with it, but as soon as another kid starts playing with it, mine, I want it. Who better to make reference to an action figure? <laughs> right? That is true. What's up with that? He is Vince's least favorite toy. I swear. Yeah. Uh, it's good stuff. AEW announced Monday Top Flight are all elite. Airwolf and El Angel Dorado, real life brothers Darius and Dante Martin, have signed with the Elite Company after making their debut on last week's Dynamite. The 21 and 19 year old brothers went up against AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks. The high players put up a good effort against Matt and Nick Jackson, but lost after Dante took a BTE trigger for the pinfall loss. They also wrestled on this past Wednesday's Dynamite. Why don't you tell us a little bit about these two up-and-coming youngsters, Fat Mac? Well, they are known as the coldest team in the game. The formerly masked Top Flight were trained at the Academy School of Professional Wrestling in Minnesota. Why would those sexy boys cover their faces? Uh, Because they have pretty cool masks. (laughs) And they were trained by Midwesterner Ken Anderson and Minnesota superstars such as Sean Devari, Arya Devari, Molly Holly, and Beef Sticks alumnus Eric Cannon. Ow, ow! Wish I had a they PBR rest- right now for you, Cannon. Ah, I wish I did. They have wrestled all over the country, but were mainstays in Eric Cannon's first wrestling in Minneapolis, where they are former tag champs, and Airwolf is a former first wrestling champion. I am yeah. so excited for, for these kids in AEW. They, I mean, I, I've watched them wrestle before, but seeing them in a big stage and against this top tier talent, they did not look out of place at all. No, they they first time on national TV, they did fucking wonderful. These guys were amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Uh, I know this week they're facing another <laughs> solid tag team, I believe, uh, SCU. Oh yeah, shit, wrong? you can't go wrong with that. I don't know. It was there. It was announced on. Uh, well, I know they, they wrestled the Hybrid 2. Oh, this, there we go. This, hybrid 2. Yeah, week. that was the one. Yep. The one on this week was the Hybrid 2, and that was a good match as well. 
They did lose, but I, I'm okay with the youngsters losing to these more established teams. And they did cheat also, so. Yeah. Well, um, these, so the, okay the, the they hybrid, lost. too, they, they definitely need to be making some moves now anyway. They've been all year. I guess just wait for the year reset and then start doing shit. But they have not had a good year. Right. But, uh, yeah, and the I, top flight, great putting Minnesota on the map. Maybe we can make Minnesota the next Chicago when it comes to wrestling, you know? Um, well, and, you know, maybe we can just bring it back to its prominence because it used to be all the good wrestlers came from Minnesota. Yeah. You know, you look at your Tully Blanchards, you look at your Ric Flair's, you look at your uh, Vern Gagne's. Uh, oh, God, there's a million and one list, and I'm, I'm just drawing a blank on so many of them, but. They were all Minnesota. Oh, the Road Warriors were Minnesota natives. It's just Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect. Oh, yeah. The list goes on and on. Plus, as we mentioned here, Molly Holly, the uh, Davari brothers. I just, I will say I I love their masks, and I, I was kind of bummed that they didn't wear their masks. So I kind of hope somewhere down the line they even maybe just wear them to the ring and take them off or something. But... Awesome. I mean, I'm so proud of these kids. I'm so happy. I've loved watching them in, in tiny arenas or tiny gyms and shit, and now to see that they made it, that's the dream. And, you know, they, they had a segment on the show where they said they literally just DM'd Matt uh, Jackson, I think it was, and said, hey, we'd like to wrestle you guys. <laughs> and that it was just as simple as that. That's so crazy. I love how that works. Although and, um, I think you gotta feel bad for Private Party right about now, because I think they just got <laughs> replaced, right? Everybody I, I, was like, "Oh, Private Party's gonna be the next big thing," and now, now, now it's now it's these guys. Yeah, I, I will admit, but it kind of shows you. It makes me think. Um, I was listening to Talk and Shop where they had Kira Hogan uh, on there, and um, she was talking about how and. She would just go to all these wrestling events. She wasn't booked. She didn't know anybody there. She'd just go. She'd have her ring her uh, her ring gear with her, and she'd just be like, "Hey, could you use Trip me tonight?" Somebody you backstage, know? Be like, there's something oh, going hey. on, and you know, some, <laughs> somebody might be late. Somebody might get hurt or something, and yeah, or they might just see might her. Get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> or, or well, and they said, uh, or, or you know. Maybe, you know, that you don't get booked that night, but then they say, hey, we got a show, you know, in this town. We could use you for an opener or something. You want to do it? So it's like, yeah, just things like that. I'm I'm not a wrestler, but I think that's everything in life. Sometimes you just got to go out there and try to do it. And maybe just DMing Matt Jackson will get you, <laughs> get you a contract with TNT. <laughs> I mean, tweeting Cody is what got Eddie Kingston to AEW. So, I mean, exactly. Get their attention. You and I should try it. We should. They don't have a nice plump tag team in the division yet. We should get ourselves blocked. <laughs> <laughs> God, another big news we didn't talk about either. Uh, uh, fucking Taz's son is training with Cody. Well, yeah, he's training. He hasn't really, he just started training. So, I mean, we're not going to see him. I would assume we wouldn't but see him the for way a they year announced or so, that on but... AEW, he's going to be debuting there. Uh, well, yeah, but probably not for a while. I would hope not. <laughs> Hook, they call him Taz Hook. Put the Taz mission in. Yeah, Taz and Hook. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome because we haven't seen a Taz mission for over a decade because mm -hmm. of his health problems, you know, his neck problems. Yeah. So that is cool. Yeah, I thought it was kind of weird and kind of forced that they had Hook on there for some reason. I still don't get it, but... We'll see what happens. I, I feel like they're just doing it because they want a Dominic. Yeah. But it's like, even Dominic is, is still too green right now, in my opinion. You bring this kid in, who from everything I've seen so far, like, has literally just started training. Like, he just started now. He's never had a match or anything. He's just running the ropes and taking flat backs and stuff. <sighs> I don't know. It seems weird. And then did you hear about their main event rumors for next week's Dynamite? No. The the wild rumor mill says Kenta is the one who laid out fucking Mox backstage two weeks ago. I've and seen people online speculate that. I, I Wasn't he the one that did it in sources. NXT? Wasn't he the one that did it in NXT when, I don't remember if it was Gargano or who, somebody got. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it was Kenta, wasn't it? Yeah. But if he's coming after Mox for the IC, for the New Japan IC title, you know. The U.S. title. Oh, U.S. Our, title. Yeah, the U.S. title. Yeah. that's uh, That could be really cool. A- and it would be your first New Japan AEW appearance together. And so it would be cool. I, I think it's far-fetched, especially with COVID and everything going on. Not to say it doesn't happen. Cause well, there he's are people, in Florida. That's you know. what the reports that I had heard said. He was in Florida. He got there yeah. at the end of last week, and he was in quarantine for a week mm-hmm. before the it would. I mean, it would be cool. I think it's far-fetched, but, again, I don't know who's a good answer for who attacked Moxley. So, um, you know. That would be super badass. Although, at the same point, I'd have to turn around and ask, why aren't you having a New Japan guy who hasn't been in WWE come to AEW? <laughs> right. I'm kind of getting tired of the WWE guys. But that's the problem because there's so many guys in AEW and WWE. I just want to go to AEW. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. I don't know either, but I know that I, I love Kenta. And so I'm fine with him being more accessible to watch for me. <laughs> Honestly. Um... <clears throat> I can't say that I can't say that AEW has been really, um, been really f- fair is not the word I want to say. They haven't been really kind to Japanese performers. I don't think. I know uh, Hikaru Shida has held the the belt now for quite a while, but she's kind of the only the only real I can think of Japanese wrestler that's been pushed on AEW. I can't well, think I of anybody think, who's even on their the shows. Because in the beginning, they were more showcasing Chinese talent in the first place. And that wasn't even a signed deal. That was just for agreement. Yeah, by showcasing, you mean they had two matches. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely want to see them do more stuff with New Japan. I do yeah. think, I will say this, I think that they're building up to a uh, trios title to be at um, um, double or nothing. Yeah. Because now that they've split up, you know, they, they split up the, um, I guess it doesn't have a name, but... Um, Eddie Kingston's group brought the Death Triangle back, like, so now there's a team of Eddie three. Eddie Kingston's group. fam. That was like the closest thing to a group name. Yeah, name. I don't like. I don't like that at all. <laughs> no, no, there's so many, you know, three people teams right now that or Eddie three Kingston, people group. Eddie or... Kingston's fam just makes me think Bebe's kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, wow, that's a reference that's dated. <laughs> Some Bebe's kids. That was a hilarious ass movie. God. <laughs> well, you got the Jurassic Express. Um, what'd you think of the Panda Express? Did you watch that? Uh, y- yeah, I believe I saw the Panda do something some point. I wasn't <laughs> fully paying attention. Uh, it was it was it was fun. Right away, right at the beginning, they throw him throw him against the ropes, and then he does the uh, you know drop down. And, you know, you go over him and hit the other rope. And after the second time back, he just fucking gets winded. <laughs> he's just, can't do it. <laughs> big, big old panda. He doesn't, he doesn't move well. <laughs> it was, good. it was, it was a good comedy segment. You know, AEW's like deal characters with... might be far-fetched, but they feel so much better than WWE characters. What was the deal with Dark this week? I never watched Dark, and I wanted to see the Lucha Express versus the Panda Express. And Dark was an uh, two and a half hours long. Oh, no, no. Is it Dark normally varies. two and a half hours? Dark, Dark is wildly different every week Holy you tune in. Shit. Sometimes they only have six matches. Sometimes they have 14 matches. You well, don't know what of, you're going to get until they I'll announce I'll tell you what, it. there was a lot of filler on this week's Dark. A lot of filler. <laughs> Including Jurassic Express versus Panda Express. It wasn't a yeah. good match, but it gave me a laugh. But that's the thing, though. It's, it's, it doesn't even just showcase AEW talent. It showcases a lot of indie talent who are on per, oh, yeah. per appearance agreements. It keeps the indies going in this time of COVID, and I think it's a beautiful thing. I don't tune oh, in nearly awesome. as much as I should. The last time I tuned in was to see Brandon Cutler beat Peter Avalon. Yeah. I love that, and Brandon Cutler gets his second win. Am I? Is this a streak now? Am I on a streak? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <clears throat> They're gonna go do good things with that guy that doesn't have any hips. He is very like straight line <laughs> from the armpits down. It's weird. <laughs> 
That's why I, I think that's why he.